Hi everyone, welcome back to the Investing Iguana, where I share with you the best tips and tricks to grow your money like a pro. I'm your host, Iggy, and today I have some exciting news for you. If you're looking for a solid bank stock to invest in, you might want to take a look at OCBC, one of the largest banks in Singapore and Southeast Asia. Why? Because they just announced their ambitious plan to deliver an extra $2.2 billion in revenue by 2025. That's right, $2.2 billion with AB. How are they going to do that? And what does it mean for you as an investor? Well, stick around and I'll tell you all about it. OCBC is one of the three largest banks in Singapore, along with DBS and UOB. As of July 2023, its market capitalization is about $60 billion and it operates in over 20 countries and regions. It offers a range of banking and financial services, such as retail banking, corporate banking, wealth management, insurance, and asset management. It also owns Bank of Singapore, which is one of the largest private banks in Asia. OCBC has been doing well in the past few years, despite the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, it reported a record net profit of $6.2 billion for 2022, up 20% 20 from 2021. It also increased its dividend payout by 25% to $0.75 cents per share, giving it a dividend yield of about 4.5%. Not bad at all, but OCBC is not resting on its laurels. They have a bold vision to grow their business even further and create more value for their shareholders. On July 3rd, they unveiled their new strategy for the next three years, called OCBC Next 2025. This strategy outlines how they plan to achieve an additional $2.2 billion in revenue by 2025, on top of their existing revenue base of about $11 billion. So how are they going to do that? Well, according to their CEO Samuel Tsien, they have identified four key growth pillars, Greater China, ASEAN, which stands for Association of Southeast Asian Nations, Wealth Management, and Sustainability. Let's break down each of these pillars and see what they mean. First, Greater China. OCBC has a strong presence in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Macau. They have been investing in these markets for decades, and they have built a loyal customer base and a diversified portfolio. They see China as a huge opportunity for growth, especially with the opening up of its financial sector and the development of the Greater Bay Area, which is a mega region that includes Hong Kong, Macau, and nine cities in mainland China. OCBC aims to leverage its network and expertise to capture more market share and cross-border business in this region. They also plan to expand their digital capabilities and partnerships to reach more customers and offer more innovative solutions. Second, ASEAN. OCBC is one of the leading banks in Southeast Asia, with operations in Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, and Myanmar. They have a deep understanding of the local markets and cultures, and they have established strong relationships with governments and regulators. They see ASEAN as a dynamic and fast-growing region with a population of over 600 million people and a GDP of over $3 trillion. OCBC wants to tap into the rising affluence and demand for banking services in this region. They also want to capitalize on the regional integration and connectivity initiatives such as the ASEAN Economic Community, which is a single market that aims to facilitate the free movement of goods, services, capital, and labor among the member states, and the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, which is a free trade agreement that covers 15 countries in Asia-Pacific. OCBC plans to enhance its digital offerings and platforms to serve more customers and segments in this region. Third, Wealth Management OCBC has a strong wealth management franchise that caters to different segments of customers from mass market to ultra-high net worth individuals. They have two main brands, OCBC Bank for Retail Customers and Bank of Singapore for Private Banking Customers. They also have other subsidiaries such as Lion Global Investors, which is an asset management company, and Great Eastern Holdings, which is an insurance company. They see wealth management as a key driver of growth, especially in Asia, where the number of millionaires and billionaires is increasing rapidly. OCBC aims to grow its assets under management, AUM, and fee income by offering more products and services, enhancing its digital capabilities and customer experience, and expanding its presence in new markets such as Europe, the Middle East, and North America. Fourth, Sustainability 
OCBC is committed to being a responsible and sustainable bank that supports the transition to a low-carbon and inclusive economy. They have adopted the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which are a set of 17 goals that address global challenges such as poverty, inequality, climate change, and environmental degradation as their guiding framework. They have also aligned their business activities with the Paris Agreement, which is an international treaty that aims to limit the global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, and the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures, which is a global initiative that provides recommendations for companies to disclose their climate-related risks and opportunities. OCBC plans to increase its financing and investments in green and social projects, such as renewable energy, green buildings, and affordable housing. They also plan to reduce their own environmental footprint, such as their carbon emissions, energy consumption, and waste generation. So those are the four pillars of OCBC's growth strategy. But how much revenue do they expect to generate from each of them? Well, according to their projections, they expect to get $1 billion from Greater China, $600 million from ASEAN, $400 million from Wealth Management, and $200 million from Sustainability. That adds up to $2.2 billion in total. But wait, there's more. OCBC also has some other initiatives that will support their growth strategy. For example, they plan to invest more in technology and innovation, such as cloud computing, artificial intelligence, data analytics, and cybersecurity. They also plan to optimize their capital and cost efficiency, such as by divesting non-core assets, streamlining processes, and automating tasks. They also plan to enhance their risk management and governance, such as by strengthening their compliance and controls, improving their resilience and recovery capabilities, and fostering a culture of integrity and accountability. So what does all this mean for you as an investor? Well, I think it means that OCBC is a great bank stock to buy and hold for the long term. Why? Because they have a clear vision of where they want to go and how they want to get there. They have a strong track record of delivering results and creating value. They have a diversified and resilient business model that can withstand shocks and seize opportunities. They have a loyal and growing customer base that trusts them with their money. And they have a high dividend yield that rewards you for your patience. Of course, there are some risks and challenges that OCBC will face along the way. For example, they will face competition from other banks and fintech players that are also vying for market share and customer loyalty. They will face regulatory uncertainties and changes that may affect their operations and profitability. They will face geopolitical tensions and trade disputes that may disrupt their cross-border business. And they will face environmental and social issues that may pose reputational and operational risks. But I believe that OCBC has the capabilities and resources to overcome these challenges and achieve their goals. I think they have a solid strategy that is aligned with the trends and needs of the markets they serve. I think they have a talented and dedicated team that is committed to executing their strategy with excellence. And I think they have a strong culture of innovation and sustainability that is embedded in everything they do. So there you have it, folks. That's my take on OCBC's new strategy and why I think it's a good reason to invest in them now. What do you think? Do you agree or disagree with me? Do you own or plan to buy OCBC shares? Let me know in the comments below. Well folks, that's a wrap. If this video tickled your finance bone and left you richer in knowledge, go on and hit that like button with the same vigor you'd use to grab a discounted item off a store shelf. It's the secret handshake that tells us you enjoyed the journey. And hey, it's a free way to vote for more finance-savvy content. While you're here, why not subscribe and become a member of the Iguana Club? We promise, no initiation rituals or secret handshakes, just solid financial wisdom delivered straight to your screen. It's like having a money mentor in your pocket. Oh, and believe me, we're just getting warmed up. We've got a gold mine of finance wizardry coming your way. Ever wondered about the nitty-gritty of investment strategies? Or perhaps how to tame the beast called the stock market? Well, consider us your financial GPS. You are part of the Investing Iguana family now. And every like, share, and subscribe is like a high five that keeps us going. It's like caffeine for our creativity, and we sure do love our coffee. So, thanks for sticking around. Remember, the road to wealth is paved with informed decisions. 
Stay curious, keep learning, and let's grow together. See you in the next video for another exciting episode of Finance Fun. Adios amigos.